A solar garden light with a password for red detector that was kindly sent in by Neville. Is it Neville? Yes, Neville, for our entertainment because it's faulty. He bought four of these. There's only one left working. The idea behind these is that when it gets dark, they're supposed to turn on, and then after a while they'll turn off, and then when you pass them, pass them for red, they'll turn on, etc., blah, blah, blah. Here's an oddity for a start. Okay, so if you press it off now, it's it will only respond to that button when you're actually, uh, when it's dark. So in the, at the moment, it's the unit's off, and if you press the button, it won't turn on, but it will when it's got the sensor covered. This one also has the little panels at the side, as well as the front, just to give it that all-round illumination. And the problem Neville was having was that when you turned it on at night, it would light initially, and then it would go off, but it would not re-trigger again the password infrared. And I have to say, if that's how it was before, I've made it infinitely worse. Because <laughs> I, I was poking about inside, and I saw the password infrared detector. It's a super ultra simple circuit. I'm going to put this circuit board out and we'll reverse engineer it and explore it. But I got a little screwdriver and I touched the sensor input, the output of the password infrared detector that goes to the chip. And noticed you could trigger it just by touching that, just by injecting sort of external influence into it. And, and then it died and it just stays on all the time now. So that's interesting. We've got an 18650 lithium cell in here, which is nice, although to be fair, I'm not spotting any charge control circuitry, which is not so nice, particularly given that the solar panel has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, sections on it, which could, should theorize you put out about 5 volts. Uh, now I'm wondering, right now I'm wondering, since there's no control over that, let's put the meter on this, and I shall just do a test right now and see what sort of current it charges at. So I'm going to uh, oop, I'm going to cover that solar panel for a start, put it up near light. Uh, you're probably not going to see this because it's going to be a bit off the scene, shall we say. I'm going to zero out, uncover that, and the current it's putting out is about 100 milliamps. That's a uh, uh, right, tell you what, I can actually show you that. No, I can show you that. Just give me a second. Let me uh, get it right under the light so it's showing the sort of highest reading, which I'm not getting the highest reading. Right, oh, let's ignore that then. Let's not do that. I was going to press the hold button. It didn't go to plan. Right, so tell you what then. I'm going to rip the circuit board out of this. I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to get some of these wires off probably, and then we'll reverse engineer it, because this looks like one of the simplest I've ever seen. So I'll be back in a moment. Hmm, the reverse engineering is done, and it's not great news, to be honest. There are a couple of flaws in this design, but also something really interesting that I hadn't even come across before. Well, maybe I have and just didn't remember it. But here's what we have. We have what appears to be a fairly standard little six-pin microcontroller to control chip. We have a diode for charging. that The solar panel goes via the diode to the battery. We have the sensor itself and the micro microcontroller and the sensor both theoretically run off 3.3 volts. That's the voltage I'm measuring from this little voltage regulator, the capacitor across the output. would have been nice to put a capacitor across the input, but they didn't. They were saving pennies. They saved pennies far too many times. It's possibly damaged the product and made it a bit dangerous as well. The output of the, uh, of the microcontroller can control the LEDs, which have the current limiting by a 1 ohm resistor, which is run, it runs LEDs about 600 milliamps, 0.36 watts, and that's controlled by a little FET. I think it's a FET. Probably is, because it's been driven directly from the microcontroller, and it's got a 10k resistor from the, the gate to the negative rail. I didn't check if that was a FET or an ordinary transistor. It might have just been relying on the microcontroller itself, limiting the current. But I would guess it probably is a FET, just because they're very good at this sort of application. The other thing there is, is a switch controlling the microcontroller, just uh, so you can signal it on and off. That's more or less it. But let's take a look at the schematic. I shall tame this down a bit here, because it's going to be quite ferocious. Here is the schematic, and I'll lock that off so it doesn't shimmer up and down. Okay, first bit of bad news. 
we have a solar panel here which consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sections, roughly half a volt each. So under load, it'll put out about, say, ten volt, uh, uh, five volts, should I say? Okay. And we've got a diode, and the diode they've chosen is Shockey diode, so that drops about 0.2 volts. And then we've got a lithium ion cell with no protection. And nothing to protect that. Um, the voltage will just keep going up. And if I was to say, for instance, if I was to grab the little dinky meter here, let's grab the little dinky meter here because it's got crop clips on it. Let's uh, release the crop clips from the thing they're connected to, which I'll show you afterwards. So let's set this to 20 volts DC. And I shall take this lithium battery out of here, and I shall connect this to here, and this to here. Okay. And then we'll hold the solar panel up to the light and see what it's going to charge the lithium battery to. It's going to try and charge the lithium battery to the best part of 6 volts. Well, that's not very good. Oh. But it gets a bit worse than that. And this is why it may have failed. So let's analyse the circuitry. I'll put that meter out of the way. We'll go back to the circuitry here. So it's charging this uh, lithium battery. I get the feeling this was designed for three nickel metal hydride cells. That's the only logical way you just use a single diode as without any other protection circuitry. That's completely wrong. The batteries are being overcharged. The voltage is then reduced to 3.3 volts by this regulator. That's a bit of another issue because 3.3 volts is just below this is going to cut off anyway. And the output uh, then gets, well, any it's got a decoupling capacitor across the output. The PIR is very interesting. Here's the little PIR module here, which I've attached some leads to. It looks like a standard PIR module, just a little metal can PIR module, except this one has the timing and logic circuitry in it, so it does everything that, well, not quite everything, but it replaces the equivalent of having the BISS 0001 one type uh, chip for use with standard detectors because normally with these detectors you supply them the plus as they're doing here and the minus but the output actually puts out a wavering voltage and it's up to the circuitry to actually amplify that and detect in this case it's just a straight logic high signal as I'll show you with this that then goes to the microcontroller unit. I should also say, uh, when you disturb this, its output goes high for about seven seconds, unless there's continuous movement in the room in which if the, it detects continuous movement, it will just stay high all the time. So it signals to the microcontroller unit, which then, when it detects it's dark, and it does this, and this is the next problem, the solar panel is connected direct in, directly to an input pin on the microcontroller, and I thought, maybe it's a dedicated chip. And, you know, I initially thought this was a chip that had that amplifier and level detecting search. I thought they were being really clever. They're not. In fact, they're not being very clever at all. I also thought this might have had a sort of high impedance input. Uh, to Because normally on an input a microcontroller, you have diodes from each uh, input pin to the supply rails for anti-static protection. In this case, it turns out that if you remove the lithium cell just to actually see what happens, and you hold it up to the light, the voltage from the uh, solar panel goes through the diode and goes to the 3.3 volt rail and the 3.3 volt rail goes up to in the region of 5 volts plus when it's actually if the solar if the particularly it would be held the only thing clamping it down is this lithium cell which at its theoretical maximum voltage which it's not going to it's going to go much higher than that unfortunately at that, it would be 4.2 minus the 2 and you know it might clamp it to a modest level that would be round about 4.2 minus the 0.24 volts minus the diode, it would have actually gone just above 3.3 volts. But if this unit is left out in the sun all day, and keep in mind this unit, it's it's not like you can say like some of the other lights that light all night. That's I've seen it in the past that they've used lithium cells and they've just, it's not a great idea, but they've relied on the fact that if the peak sun all day uh, 
would only charge the lithium cell up to about half its capacity or near its full capacity, but not anymore. It's not a great way to do it. And then at night time, the light would light and it would just discharge that. But in this instance, the light is only lighting when there's movement in the vicinity. So if it charges the battery up to its hilt, 4.2 volts, and then there's not much movement that night, it's never really going to be that much. You know, it's going to light momentarily. The next sunny day, it's going to just keep pushing current into that lithium cell and the voltage is going to go higher. I've never actually checked how high the voltage can go. Theoretically, it could go up to the point that it suffers internal catastrophic failure, but it would certainly degrade the chemistry. That lithium cell incidentally is currently on test. I shall, if it's not finished the test by the end of this video, I shall um, put it in the, the description down below of what uh, capacity it has. At the moment, it's probably around about 800 milliamp hour capacity. I'm just going to check that. It's currently showing just over 1 amp hour, uh, but the charge current is dropping off. So I'm going to say 1.2 amp hour, maybe. Not sure. Um, it would be surprising if it did actually take a decent charge if it's been out in the sunshine that's been really pushed above its normal voltage. So I wonder if that increasing voltage on the 3.3 volt rail, because that's not supposed to be 5 volts, that's supposed to be 3.3 volts, has been an issue. And the reason they've chosen 3.3 volts is to provide a stabilised supply for reliability of the passive infrared detector with the fluctuations of the battery voltage with the rather high load, 600 milliamps, of the LEDs when they turn on. Okay, so the microcontroller has the button input. The button simply pulls the input to the microcontroller to the positive rail. It detects that the, it's gone dark because it sees a low voltage. It sees a low state on there from the solar, the solar panel. And when it detects a password for a trigger, which it's actually internally it's triggering all the time, but it's just a, a low quiescent current that it does that. When it detects it's dark and it's got the trigger, it starts a timer and it puts the output to the MOSFET and that then drives the LEDs via that 1 ohm resistor with their 600 milliamps of current. And that is the circuit. So now I shall um, stick a battery back in that, not the actual battery that came with it. This is a, an Elfaland 3000 milliamp power battery, which is extraordinarily light. And I shall bring this back over here. And I shall click the button to turn it on. I could zoom out now. I could zoom out. I shall zoom out. And because it's not getting a signal from the passive infrared detector module, after a while, the light will go out. And this is where the excruciating delay of me waiting for the light to go out. The light has gone out. We've got the negative, we've got the signal in, we've got the positive. If I bridge the positive to the input of the microcontroller, it just completely ignores me and doesn't trigger. Right, okay, it kind of triggered. Ooh, that's kind of odd that it's actually triggering on and off from that. Oh, that's okay. But it does kind of trigger. So let's take a look at the sensor itself, because that is quite interesting. That may be where the problem, maybe it has suffered damage uh, through the over voltage or maybe it's uh, suffered damage through the uh, the high current coming from the lithium, uh, the uh, solar panel. So let's put this down to 20 volts. Let's get the bench power supply on. Let's put this to the output of the detector and put this to the negative. Let's power it up. And after a stabilisation delay, if I get this connected correctly, I think I have. Why is it showing minus 1.6 volts? That's not right. Ah, everything's going wrong. This, this sometimes happens. Have I got a decent connection on here? Is this a shitty meter? Probably. Uh, so it's currently displaying zero voltage. I don't know how long it takes to stabilise it. There it's kicked in, it's uh, triggered. Actually, you know what would help? Putting the lens in the front. That's needed to get a decent uh, sensing because it actually relies on the multiple domed lenses here to detect a hot spot travelling across the front of the unit between two sensors. So if I hold still momentarily, after about seven seconds or so, it will if I can stay completely still, it will cut off and you'll see the voltage in the meter go down to about zero volts. 
the fact I'm holding this means it's probably seeing lots of little fluctuations of movement, so it's not going to do it. Uh oh. Right. There it goes. And then when I move again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Reset. No, it's detecting me actually. It's because I'm holding it and because the, even the slightest movement, because it can see actually the movement, it's the equivalent of seeing objects moving in front of it. I'd actually have to cover it completely to actually show you that. Like that. And then step out of the range until it reset. I've never seen a sensor like that that actually has the circuitry built in. So now if I trigger it, move, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or maybe a little bit more than seven seconds then. Okay. But, but you get the point. It has that sensing built in and it's really hard staying still in the vicinity of this thing because it's a very sensitive little sensor, sensitive little device. So uh, what is actually wrong with the units? Because he's got, out of four, three went faulty. I wonder if it's, uh, going to I wonder if it's the little sensor here has been damaged or the microcontroller has been damaged by the fact that, you know, it's just... Uh, being abused and well so is the lithium battery being abused it would be interesting measuring the voltage of those lithium batteries to see what they were up to if they're above 4.2 volts that's pretty bad it ends up resulting in a sort of like a, a lot of the the lithium ions tend to clump and you get a sort of a higher density of lithium in one side of the chemistry and it shortens the life of the battery so <clears throat> I guess ultimately, what can I say? I, I'm not sure exactly what went wrong because now I've taken that apart, it's all kind of started, the individual components have started working again. Will I put this back in there? That I could do that. I could try and put the whole thing together ish and see if it works. I'm going to try that and see what happens. I've put it back in, it immediately ceased to function again. And probing about showed that the input here between the pass and thread, the pass and thread out in the open is putting out that logic state uh, change. But the input to the microcontroller appears to be gubbed. It seems to be pulling it down low. And if you actually bridge it deliberately with a screwdriver to 5 volts, it then triggers that on. So something has gone on in the microcontroller and there's a very good chance that that's because an adjacent pin has been overvolted from the solar panel because all they needed in that sense was a resistor, something like pff, even like 100k or something like that, just to be able to sense the input without actually current flowing through the diodes to the supply rails. So interesting device, but I'm afraid the answer is they're a bit shit. There are so many design flaws. The worst being that this battery has potentially been greatly overcharged. I wonder what its original capacity was. It's fairly anonymous. But um, the circuitry has nothing to regulate that charge. I thought maybe originally that the this would have been a dedicated chip. Maybe it just shunted that down to about 4.2 plus the drop of the diode, maybe 4.4. But it doesn't. It is just seemingly a little plain microcontroller and just some very, very bad design. I guess maybe... If that had been uh, the standard, uh, if the cell had been the sort of nicometal hydride cells, typical three pack, I think I'd still have wanted a resistor though in there. Yeah, it's not a good design. I think that's the answer here. The reason your lights have failed is because they're a bit rubbish. Not only that, but they're potentially quite significantly overcharging the lithium cells inside. So maybe it's time to get some new lights is the answer to this because it, you know, it's a shame it's a nice enough built light. Um, it's just the circuitry seems to have uh, flaws and been used the wrong type of cell. So interesting though, well worth taking apart.